it, it was extraordinary because uh, I mean, he 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 would be like on 24 hours a day. Yeah. It would it would be jokes, stand up, uh, and, and and he'd entertain the troops. Like I said before, if you went away for two hours while they did the lighting and everything, most people would go back to their trailers, have a cup of coffee, read a book. He would entertain the troops. He would do stand-up, so funny walks. 24-7, but 24 after a while, did it, did, it, did it grate on you? Or, or? No, I don't think so, because it was actually... Um, uh, uh, because it was such an extraordinary thing to do. Yeah. And, uh, and he was so inventive as well. I mean, he would, he would be... Uh, uh, there was no script. It was a script that we originally had, but it was all improvised on the day. Yeah. He would change stuff and do stuff, and I, I was lucky because I, I had this aptitude that I, 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 I thought I knew when he'd finished. Yeah. So he'd try something, and then when he finished, I would come in with my line, and he liked that because I didn't trample on anything that he did. Yeah. I was just very acute to when he finished, and he. He had a name for me in the end. He called me Reaction Jackson because I just reacted to everything he did. Yeah. And I had this fun thing with it that, that actually I was so phased to begin with that as the, as the filming went on, I thought my character started to enjoy what he did more and more, which is what happened. And I think that really worked in the film. You know? Yeah. It's a lot of fun to do. No, it's, it, it was it's a lot um, of fun to do. Do you think he'd ever do like a third one? Because he did the second Dumb I and Dumber I, I, recently. I know he did Dumb and Dumber. I, I, I think he may be... Because his career is kind of... Do you think he's dipped? I think he's kind of dipped a little bit. Really? Oh. In, in a comic sense. He hasn't really, you know, he hasn't really done like a giant comedy film for a very long How time. How did Dumb and Dumber do? Did, um, how did it didn't do too do? great. It, it got mixed reviews and at the box office it was it was very low. Really? Yeah, yeah. Really? Oh, right. But so there's rumours that he won't, you know, because of this, he, he was he was open to do like a mask too, and he was open to do an Ace Ventura three. And I just wonder if you heard well, maybe, anything else in the pipeline. He will, maybe he will do Ace Ventura three because I mean that would I mean I, I think that would go through the roof, wouldn't it? Really? I think if they did three, that there would be a entirely different cast, yeah, entirely different story. And, and so he so, won't yes. hook up with you again then. When they no, I, you again, I, I no? don't think we'd see. Uh, I don't think we'd see, um, uh, uh, you know. Another interesting story from it was that um, uh, there was a model in the original movie who played his love interest in the movie. She was a black American model and um, her manager prevented her from coming to rehearsals, which was a big mistake. He said, you're not paying for rehearsals, therefore she's not gonna come. It's something that she should have done and needed to do because she was no actress and she needed to rehearse. And so why do you think he did that? Is because it was a financial thing. He's saying, you're not going to pay for her. To, and no one got paid for rehearsals. We just turned up and did them. Yeah. And she didn't turn up. And, and consequently, on the day when we filmed, she was hopeless. She, she couldn't... She, I remember there was one take, and... one take that I think he did 40 takes on the take. And he kept on saying, do it this way, do it this way. And he gave the inflection and she couldn't do it. By uh, lunchtime, yeah. she was fired. She was fired. And that was, was that seen alongside Jim Carrey? Or was that with no, someone else? No, he didn't. It, it was with someone else. But he heard about it at lunchtime oh, and, right, okay. and said, she's got to go. She's got to fire her. And the producer, the, the, the director, strangely, came to me Hello. and said, look, if you, if you know of anybody... Hello. There was an interesting thing that happened with, uh, um, like, I get picked up at six o'clock in the morning, uh, get taken to the set, do my makeup, and ready to go about eight o'clock, and I'd be, I'd be sitting there um, ready to uh, work at eight, sitting in my trailer. Nine o'clock went, no one came to get me. Ten o'clock, about eleven o'clock, I'd eventually get picked up, and I always thought they were doing something else until about eleven. But it turned out that Jim Carrey wasn't turning up. Really? He, he, he wasn't showing until about 10 o'clock, and then he'd take about an hour to go through makeup, and about 11 he'd be ready to film. And eventually, this happened day after day after day, and we were losing time. We were losing, you know, a good three hours of filming every day. And so the producers, um, uh, they actually, um, you know, summoned up courage to have a word with him and say, look, 
yeah. to think you could possibly, you know, try and get here a little earlier so we could start earlier in the morning. And he turned to them and he said, um, he said, uh, and said, do you want, do you want an opening weekend of forty million dollars? Because I can give you that. Well, that's Jim, what Jim you want. Perry said this. He said, do you want an opening weekend of forty million dollars? And that shut him up. And that's what he gave him. When we opened, we opened the weekend that we opened. They took over forty million dollars at the box office. That's an, that's an incredible line, isn't it? And that it, you can use. Of course, and that took about. I think in those days he was probably on about no more than six or seven, maybe for the. I mean, he'd only done a few few hundred thousand for the first one. Yeah. Then he'd done Mask, and by the time we we done ours as well. He, he, he done uh, he done the first Batman as well that, that he was in yeah, yeah. With, with Al Kilmer and whatnot yeah so he was probably on about six but forty million absolutely was phenomenal and then it went over a hundred million I think in the end yeah yeah no I mean he is um, I mean I was working every single day with him for four months and I have no idea what he's like as a person no it was all a front it was every single day was a performance. Funny voices, funny walks, funny this, funny that. The rumours about Tom Cruise for years, is, is he straight, is he homosexual, is he, you know, there was that story of, of um, his agent finding him uh, a suitable girlfriend and he was going for a batch of girls. Oh, to, I, think, to... I think, I think if you, if you, um, if you, if you look at the, if you look at the, um, uh, uh, there's a brilliant documentary yeah. on Scientology out yeah. of the mo moment. Oh, you should try and find it. I can't remember what it's called. It's called something like. Um, you don't. You don't follow it yourself. Are you a well, Scientology? Scientology. No. no. Yeah. But you should. You, you should watch that because it's got it all about his arranged marriages and all about really? that. Absolutely. Uh, oh, that finding women. It's for extraordinary, him. though. Isn't Scientology it? found women for him all the time. It's and, extraordinary. Uh, it's extraordinary. It's... No, no, it really is. It's fascinating. Why, why do you think a person turns to, to Scientology, such as like, you know, um, John Travolta, John Travolta as well is what another is one. What is it called? It is called, look out, look out, you, you punch in documentaries on Scientology, yeah. you'll come across this, and it is an amazing documentary, and it has all all the stuff about Tom Cruise in it. And so if I, do, if I do a quick kind of like uh, name uh, drop, and you just give me one word, uh, so I'll, I'll mention a, a, an actor or an actress, and you say one word: Johnny Depp, Stoner, uh, Michael Caine, um, Luckiest Man in the World, Jim Carrey, um, uh, Complete Nutter, <laughs> um, my mind's gone empty. Um, I'm trying to think of someone else. Oh, Hugh Grant. You worked with Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant. I tell you, Hugh Grant was just a. When I worked with him, right, okay, he was just about to become famous from Four Weddings and a Funeral. It hadn't come out, but in the in, in the makeup room every single day, he would have about all the tabloids, and he'd go through the tabloids looking for his name because he was just about to become famous. And it was. He'd, he'd have the Sun, the Mirror, and really? they're all in there. The drum on the floor. He just went through all the pages to find a photograph of himself or uh, or something about him, and it was just about to break. It was just about to become famous. Yeah, lovely guy, very very sweet, very funny. And any any um, you know future projects that you've got coming up in in, in Hollywood or I've got, back no, in the well, UK? Well, I'm going I'm going over to um, I'm going over to uh, uh, Atlanta in November to do the uh, um, do the launch the PBS launch of Doc Martin. I'm going to do that, then I'm going to go to Long Island to, to do a Doctor Who convention, and then I'm going to go to Chicago for Chicago TARDIS, which is another Doctor Who convention, so I'm going to do those in, in New York. And next year, I fly to my, in April, I fly to Miami, and I go on the Doctor Who cruise around the Caribbean. Wow. That sounds awesome. Big mega boat, right, okay, thousands of people. For about 40, 50 uh, Doctor Who fans. You're going to have your sun lotion and your trunks sun on? Sun lotion, my trunks <laughs> on, and there are four people. And all you have to do is have dinner with them in the evening. That's all you do. Everything paid for. You can't do better amazing. than that, can you? Sorry.